The Cameroon Coffee Sector, Value Chain or Broken Chain by Dr. Michael Njum Ebung. Four million people in Cameroon work in the coffee sector, but coffee growers are the poorest brackets of the national population. That should place them at the top of the government's agenda for poverty reduction, included related rural development programs and projects. The coffee sector has been in serious trouble following liberalization of the agricultural commodity sector in the early 1990s. Low farm productivity rates are common in Africa as a whole. The implication is that coffee production costs are much higher in Cameroon and other African countries than in Brazil. A poor or inadequate rural road network limits the flow of investments, of farm inputs and of new technologies into rural smallholder agriculture, and that results in low productivity rates and low produce quality. World and domestic coffee market volatility following liberalization may be considered the prime reason why coffee production in Cameroon started a downward curve as from the early 1990s. These pro-market reforms were not specific to Cameroon. They were part of a general neoliberal movement promoted in the 1980s by President Ronald Reagan of the United States and Margaret Thatcher of the United Kingdom. President Reagan in particular, urging the rest of the world to discover the magic of the marketplace, pushed through a radical privatization agenda that all but demolished the Keynesian policy pillars of the post-war welfare state in Europe and elsewhere. For the farmer, coffee quality, price stability and price productivity were the key pre-1990 chain ingredients, as 1960 to 1990 production statistics also bear out. The coffee sector witnessed a optimistic upward curve of three straight decades, simply reflecting the upbeat mood of the coffee farmer. Further still, Cameroon coffee had recognition and even signature in foreign markets. As such, the pre-1990 coffee value chain could be called producer-driven, since producing countries could influence outcomes in the rest of the chain, inter alia through stock regulation and control, thanks to the pricing mechanism over the portion of the chain revenue going to the farmer. The post-liberalization period, which we're still witnessing, has reversed the pre-1990 stability in several ways. In short, Liberalisation has resulted in multinational giants governing and driving the entire chain. Liberalisation, as was implemented, severely shortchanged and penalised the coffee farmer on several counts and handsomely rewarded coffee traders and roasters in the developed countries. Overall, African coffee production data suggests that coffee output declined almost by the same proportion that the African coffee farmer's share of the value chain declined from the 1990 to 2010, that is close to 50%. Another problem is that while the coffee market was being deregulated in Cameroon and elsewhere in Africa, new complex forms of regulation were increasingly imposed on poor farmers by way of certification and stability programs fostered partly by the major operations in the developed countries controlling the coffee value chain. The coffee sector is also a casualty of the major challenges facing the country's agricultural and rural development as a whole. The most serious and better known of those challenges concerns the limited rural road network and farm-to-market roads, which bedevil the coffee sector and national agricultural production more generally. The identification and design of many agricultural and rural development programs and projects and national level are almost always top, always top bottom, bureaucratic initiatives hardly ever involving the participation of farmers and farmer organisations expected to benefit. Initiatives besides micro projects submitted by beneficiaries are rare and far between. In conclusion, the institutional layer between the state and the farmer seems to have uh, appropriated for itself the resources and role rightly belonging to the farmer and the farmer organisations. That is part of the explanation for declining coffee production statistics since liberalisation in the 1990s. The first major initiative of note was the adoption in 2010 of the Cameroon Coffee Sector Development Strategy, crafted with the support of the stakeholders in the national farmer value chain, as well as some major international development partners, such as the European Union, the World Bank, the Common Fund for Commodities, Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations and the International Trade Center. The subsequent drift of the strategy, however, suggested that it lacked 
an institutional parent. Mysterio or otherwise, to spearhead its implementation and coordination at all levels. As such, for the Cameroon coffee sector to be energised anew so that it performs more and better, the farm gate price must increase to motivational levels. Accordingly, the new revival plan could be counterproductive if not self-defeating if it's reduced net revenue occurring to the coffee farmer, source of the value chain. The solution would be to revert to the pre-1990 policy of concentrating domestic value adding processes in farmer corporizations. Other issues on a possible reform agenda can include improve the rural road network, especially in high production and potential production zones, restore annual stability of cocoa and coffee farm gate prices, rebuild and reinforce the cooperative movement. International traders should support farmer cooperatives. The foregoing is a minimalist agenda for saving our coffee sector from extinction and for levelling the currently unequal and rigged playing field of the north-south coffee value chain.